Hey everybody, this is Anna Vogan, broker of Vineyard Real Estate Group, and I wanted to talk about liability um, in regards to the seller's property disclosure. So I'm going to be looking down and reading a lot um, because I'm going to go over a couple case studies. Um, the disclosure statement language, I want to read that to you first. It says, the answers of seller below should not be a substitute for buyer conducting a, a careful, independent evaluation of a property. The caveat emptor or buyer beware is the law in Georgia. Buyer is expected to use reasonable care to identify defects in the property and satisfy herself or himself that the property is suitable for buyer's needs and purposes. If an independent evaluation of the property reveals potential problems or areas of concern that would cause a reasonable buyer to investigate further, buyer may not have legal recourse if buyer fails to investigate further. Basically saying, hey, if you walk into a property and you're asking questions is, you know, is um, there's a spot on the ceiling? Is Does that mean that there was a roof leak? And then you don't investigate further then that's, that's really on the buyer. Um, here's another, this is a case study, okay? This is a case where a buyer sued a seller, their real estate agent, and the brokerage firm for fraud, conspiracy to defraud, and breach of contract and breach of Breda. So the buyers and sellers had entered, entered into a contract of sale which contained a disclaimer provision stating that they did not rely on any statements made by the broker. The contract also contained an entire agreement clause stating that the contract represented the entire agreement between parties and any, representation, any representations that were not included in the contract would not be binding. And lastly, the contract incorporated um, the seller's disclosure for reference. So, um, before the parties signed the contract, the sellers gave the buyers the property disclosure, which did refer to past and present termite damage, but it stated that the damage had been corrected. It also stated that there were problems with the walkways and water intrusions, but said that there hadn't been any water in the basement since 1989. Well, shortly after the closing, the homeowners found termite and rodent infestation, water intrusion, and soil settlement problems. That's our worst nightmare. For everybody watching this, it's your worst nightmare in real estate, right? I did have a tree fall on a roof right after closing, so that's another big nightmare. Different video altogether. But the court held that with respect to the buyer's claims against the agent and the broker, there was no evidence that the agent knew about the home's defects apart from what was stated in the seller's property disclosure statement. Remember that for a minute. I'm going to come back to that. Therefore, the agent and the broker could not be held liable for the seller's false statements. Okay. Now, I said I was going to come back to that. And this is really important. If somebody asks you, the agent, does the roof leak? Your answer is the seller or the seller indicated that in his, prop, in his property disclosure statement that the roof does not leak. Your answer, even if you are 99.9% .9 sure the roof does not leak, you do not say the roof does not leak, or I don't know about the roof leaking. You say the seller indicated in his seller's property disclosure statement that the roof does not leak. Even better if you're texting this or emailing this and you have it in writing. Um, it says the former statement makes it clear that the broker is merely repeating information provided by the seller. The latter statement could be misconstrued as a rep representation of the broker. Never want to do that. Um, to help avoid this issue further, all GAR purchase and sale agreements protect brokers by requiring the seller and buyer to acknowledge that they have not relied on any representation of brokers re related to certain information concerning the property. So it's nice to have these protections in there for us. Um, one thing to keep in mind, the failure to complete a seller's property disclosure statement does not relieve a seller from disclosing known issues about the property. They are still supposed to disclose issues that they know about, even if you check that no seller's property disclosure will exist. Um, so that's that's a really big important thing to keep in mind because a seller could be held liable 
uh, for his failure to accurately and honestly disclose the information. So caveat emptor is the law in Georgia, but there are three circumstances in which sellers of residential property can be held liable for failing to disclose defects in the property. Um, one of them is just knowingly lying. You, you know for a fact that the house is being held together by termites holding hands. You're going to want to disclose that as a seller. As an agent, if you know this to be true, you're liable also for disclosing these things in writing. Um, the second situation where a seller could be held liable is concealment. I'm certain that most of us have come across a situation where a seller said, hey, there's a spot on my ceiling from where it used to leak. I'm going to paint it so they don't think that it's still leaking. Kind of sketchy. Not advised. Third situation is passive concealment. And that's when a seller knows about it, but just kind of doesn't mention it and hopes that nobody else does too. So an agent can be held liable for passive concealment if the agent knew and did not disclose it. That's a really big deal. There is, this is a really interesting case. Um, I'm probably going to butcher these last names, but I have a weird last name and I've been called everything. So I'm gonna try it. Condon and Kuntz, probably. They um, were, they were buyers purchasing land with the intent to raise horses. The seller of the land knew for a fact, because they had their own issues with this, that the grass in the pastures had a certain bacteria or fungus that affected horse hooves and they didn't disclose it and they were sued. Um, and the buyers won because uh, of this fungus or bacteria in the pasture uh, that the seller totally knew about. So how do you disclose an issue with a house that you're aware of? And according to Breda, the answer is in writing, preferably prior to the buyer and seller entering into the purchase and sale agreement. So in writing is a big important thing. You know that if you're in real estate, um, it's, it's a really big deal. So uh, there's another, another couple of cases that I wanted to just go over. Um, a, an agent wrote this and was held liable. During an unusually heavy rainstorm of July 2011, I was inspecting the property and saw a large puddle of water in the basement and did not disclose it. That would be something that would be very important to disclose. Even though, you know, you can always include, I've never seen water in the house except for this one time. That would be extremely important. Another one, um, this is actually a, this is a water disclosure from a neighbor's statement to a broker. A neighbor informed me that he had seen water ponding in the basement of the property after a big rain. Since we have little rain this summer, I've not seen the condition and do not know if it continues to exist or has been corrected. That's a really good way to let all parties know in writing um, that a situation exists. So all good things to keep in mind regarding the seller's property disclosure. I hope that this helps you out. Again, don't think that because you've checked no seller's property disclosure shall exist that everybody's protected. That is not the case at all. So our job is to keep our sellers protected, keep our buyers protected, and keep our agents compliant. So make sure that you keep all of this in mind when you're writing up the contracts and receiving them. Thanks again.